These optimization problems that we'll look at in this lesson are ones where you need to create the function by yourself. So you're not provided with the equation, you're provided with some scenario and something you're trying to optimize. The scenario we have is given 10 meters of string, what are the dimensions of the rectangular enclosure with the maximum area that could be made with that string? So I've got 10 meters of string. If I didn't know calculus and I was in say grade seven or grade six, I'd just, I'd just guess and check. So I'd make some rectangles. Okay, maybe I'll make the length four and then realize I've got two meters of string length left. Okay, that's one way I could use my 10 meters of string. What's the area of this rectangle? Well, length times width, four times one will be four meters squared. Okay, and I can just keep guessing and checking. Maybe I'll, I'll think, oh, I might make the, the length three. Okay, and I've got four meters left, so put twos on here. Six meters squared. Okay. Um, three, two, one. Okay, maybe I'll make a really a skinny one. So let's say I make it only 0 0.5 meters wide. I've only used one meter. I still have nine meters left, so I can make these 4.5. Okay, and this will give me an area of um, 2.25 meters squared. Okay, so I can make all different sorts of rectangles, and the area is going to be different for all of them. If we just look at the ones we've got, I've got 4 meters squared, 6 meters squared, and 2.25 meters squared. Of those that I've drawn so far, this one will have the maximum area. But I can't be sure that that one is actually the maximum. Okay, So I want to do it in a systematic way, using calculus, using optimization, to be sure that I've got the biggest rectangle. So in this calculus method, the first step is to draw a diagram of the situation and define any variables. So I'm going to draw just a rectangle, but I'm not going to put numbers on the length and width. Instead, I'm just going to put letters. So I'm going to say, let the length be X and the width be Y. Okay, and I'll make sure that I define that as well. So I define my variables so that when I write my equations, I'll have some idea of, of what I'm referring to. Okay, point two, write a formula for the quantity being optimized. So the quantity being maximized or minimized. I'll look in my question and it says, what are the dimensions of the rectangular enclosure with the maximum area? So that'll tell me that I'm trying to find a formula for area. Okay, in this case, it's area. So I'll let A be area. And my formula for area of this rectangle will be a equals x times y. Okay, if I'm trying to do calculus and optimize this, I've got two variables. I can't graph a and x and y unless I go into 3D and have mountains and little 3D shapes going around the place. So I'm going to need to do something. Step three says, find any relationships between the other quantities so that your formula is a function of one variable only. At the moment, my area is a function of two variables. So my goal is to eliminate one of those variables. So I'll look back in the question. Normally there'll be some fact that I haven't used, okay, given 10 meters of string. So I know that the perimeter is 10 meters. I also know that I can write the perimeter of a rectangle as 2x plus 2y. So I can combine these and I'll have the equation 10 is 2x plus 2y. So this is what it means by finding a relationship between the two variables. That's how the x and or the y is related, that 2x plus 2y has to equal 10. So now I'm going to rearrange for one of these variables. Okay, in this case, I'm going to rearrange for y. Okay, in this case, it doesn't matter which one we're rearranging for, but in future cases, you'll look for which one's the easiest to rearrange for or which will be the easiest to substitute back into this formula. So I'll try and get y by itself. So I'll get rid of that 2x to the left-hand side and then divide both sides by two. Okay, just writing what I'm doing. So divide 10 by two is five, minus two x by two is x. 
Okay, so now I've, I've rearranged this, so I've got y equals 5 minus x. What I'm going to do is now in this original equation, I'm going to substitute y equals 5 minus x. So instead of writing y here, I'm going to put 5 minus x in there. So I'll rewrite my equation. So area equals x, 5 minus x. And now it's just a function of one variable. So I can write it in function notation if I want. Okay, this is pretty much the hardest part of the problem. Once I have an equation in terms of just one variable, I'm pretty much good to go and start my optimization. Okay, so I'm trying to find a maximum area. I know that stationary points or turning points, whatever language you want to use, okay, they're going to occur at a dash of x equals zero. Okay, so I know I'm going to have to differentiate this, so I don't have product rule at this stage, so I better multiply these out. So I need to find the derivative, find what a dash of x is. So I'll differentiate this guy, 5 minus 2x. If you can't do that, you need to go back to differentiation by rule. I believe it's uh, less than 3. Okay, and then I'm going to set a dash of x equal to 0. Okay, so 0 equals 5 minus 2x. And I'm going to solve here. Okay, so I get x equals 2.5. So at this point, what I know is that there's a turning point at x equals 2.5. I'm not sure whether it's a maximum, minimum, or point of inflection. Okay, so I'll, I'll need to find the corresponding area. So find what the area is at 2.5, just so I can state this as a point. So I'll put this into my area function, which is 5x minus x squared. And I'll get an area of 6.25. Okay, so at the moment I know that 2.5, 6.25 is a turning point. Okay, again, not sure which one it is, so I better classify it. There's all different ways you can go about classifying this. You might want to do the table method. Remember, in the table method, we're looking at the slope, so substituting into um, a dash these three points, okay, one point either side of our turning point. And we can see that on the left-hand side or the negative side of the point, it's positive, then flat, then negative. So I can classify that 2.5, 6.25 is a maximum. Okay, alternatively, I could use the second derivative test. So in the second derivative test, I'll take my derivative, I'll differentiate it again, so losing with minus 2, okay, and I'll sub in x equals 2.5. I'll see the a dash dash of 2.5, so if I sub in x into minus 2, it's still minus 2 regardless of the value of x. A negative value here, this implies that 2 point, so this negative 2, which is negative, this implies that 2.5, 6.25 is a maximum. Okay, so we found what appears to be our maximum area. Um, if we wanted to be really fancy, and we probably should be, we should probably note um, the domain is really only x values between 0 and 5. Okay, I can't get bigger than 5. Okay, if I had a line of 5, I'd have another line of 5 for my lengths, and I'd have 0 width. So anything bigger than 5 can't happen, and also anything, I can't have a length less than 0. So technically speaking, I should really look at my greatest and least values. So I should look for the greatest value. Okay, evaluating the area at the domain endpoint. 
okay, at the local max because I'm not sure that maximum is actually a, a global maximum and the other domain endpoint. Okay, so I really should evaluate at 0, 2.5, and 5. Okay, thankfully, I've already looked, found what area is at 2.5, at 6.25. Subbing in 0 into my area formula will give me zeros on both sides here. Okay, so if I graphed area versus the length of one side, okay, it'd be a quadratic looking like this going through 0 and 5, and it has a maximum at 2.5, 6.25. So in the end, in conclusion, I can write the maximum area possible is 6.25 meters squared. Now I'll look back and see if I've actually answered the question. It says, what are the dimensions? Okay, so I need to find the width as well. Thankfully, up here, I have an equation for the width. Okay, so if I want to now find the width, I've got y equals 5 minus x. Okay, I know my optimum length is 2.5, so I'll sub in x equals 2.5, get y equals 5 minus 2.5, or y equals 2.5. So my maximum area possible is 6.25, which occurs when both the length and width is 2.5 centimeters, okay, i.e. that is a square. Okay, so from here, you can have a go at some of these 13F problems. The idea is eventually you'll do all of the 13F problems. Okay, some of them get pretty hard, but I'm sure you're more than capable uh, of doing that. Obviously there's a fair bit to this so your communication needs to be on point and good luck.